Hey guys, today I'm showing you how to make some really easy sugar cookies that won't spread and as a bonus, they're gonna be two-toned, pink and white stripes. It'll be really cute and not difficult. Let's get started. First step is gonna to be to cream our butter and sugar. I'm adding in two sticks of butter into my standing mixer fitted with a paddle attachment. We'll be running the mixer for like maybe five minutes, one cup of granulated sugar. Let that mix for a few minutes on low until it's light and fluffy. Sugar's light and fluffy. I'm gonna set this aside while I sift my dry ingredients. I'm using a kitchen scale so I can divide the mixture into two equal batches. You could also just make two batches that are larger and you can freeze the extra sugar cookie dough. It always comes in handy. Right now I'm gonna sift four cups of all-purpose flour. Now I'm adding in three quarters of a cup of cornstarch. This is the secret ingredient that makes the sugar cookies stay in place. They won't spread. And three quarters of a teaspoon of kosher salt. Give your ingredients a nice whisk just to get everything incorporated. You don't want any spots that are salty or have no salt, etc. The cool thing about using a kitchen scale is you can do things exactly. So I'm splitting this into two batches. This is 621 grams, so it'll be two batches of 310 grams, 0.5. Now I'll do the same thing with the butter and we'll get to mixing. My sugar and butter mixture is 450 grams, so divide that by two and we'll have our two cool batches. So one batch is gonna be a beautiful white color and the other one is gonna be a nice soft pink, which I'm getting by adding a few drops of soft pink gel food coloring. You can get this online or at some specialty stores as well. Just add it in and give it a little whip. It's probably gonna be a really strong color at first, but the flour will soften it up. Nice and pink. Now I'm gonna add in one egg and half a teaspoon of vanilla. Give it a nice whip. Now we're gonna add our flour mixture in and beat until combined. Just let this mix on low for a few minutes and then you can scrape the bottom, mix a little bit more. It's a dry mixture, part of the no spread, so that'll be um, kind of a crumbly consistency, but when it chills in the fridge, it'll all come together, kind of like a pastry dough. I'm adding in a quarter cup of sprinkles to each batch. I don't know if it's gonna be perfect, but I just can't resist. It seems appropriate. So let's see how that goes. So pretty, I love it. Okay. Let's fold in those sprinkles. I'm just gonna sprinkle a couple of more sprinkles onto the plastic here, and then turn my dough out for rolling. And because of the sprinkle distribution being a little uneven still, I will be doing just a tiny bit of kneading, which I wouldn't normally do for a sugar cookie. Add one more sheet of plastic on top. And now we can give it a gentle roll. Oh my gosh, I'm getting like a lot of feelings from this dough. <laughs> into the fridge to chill while I make our other batch. Now it's time to repeat the process with the other batch. Same deal, just no food coloring. So one egg into your butter mixture, a little bit of vanilla, and mix it up. Scrape the bowl down. Just give it a mix yourself. And now we add our dry mixture in. Don't forget the sprinkles, very important. Quarter of a cup or so into the bowl and mix. So plop the dough out onto the plastic and we'll knead it by hand just a little bit to distribute those sprinkles. You can see it has a bit of a crumbly texture, but after you chill it, it'll be totally different. Into the fridge to chill now for maybe half an hour. So my dough is out of the fridge, nice and chilled, and it's just right so I can begin rolling it out. I'm gonna give it one final roll and then use a ruler to cut little strips just under half an inch. I'm gonna press them together. Roll again, and I'll have beautiful stripes that I can cut little circles with. You can do any shape you want, but I like circles. I always like to use a silk pad because it prevents burning on the bottom of the cookie, which is just nice. No one wants a burnt cookie when you're photographing. These cookies look so cool. Anyways, I'm gonna pop this into the oven at 375 for maybe 10 to 12 minutes. 
I love using candy melt because you don't have to temper it. You can melt it really easily and it cools and hardens right away. This tasted so good. If you have any questions, ask me in the comments below. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.